Welcome once again to The Simple Truth. I'm John Furnish, your uh, teacher. <clears throat> I uh, uh, have been enjoying doing the Bible studies here at WTJR and, and getting it out to you. I've, I've had some great comments from, from people in, in my journey to uh, where I go. And uh, I, I much appreciate those people and I uh, pray for those that, that do watch. And I pray for those that, that even as they're going through the channels, Stop for a moment. They get a little bit of the word, and that's what's important is getting part of the word into them. Um, I just uh, praise God for all the things he's doing around not only my life, but my wife's life. Uh, and uh, uh, we just want to pray for you all and say God bless you and let God's uh, blessings be poured out on you in Jesus' name. Today we were in verse... Uh, 11 of chapter 9 of Hebrews. We've been doing the book of Hebrews. We've been uh, taking our time going through it. There's a, a lot of Old Testament uh, bringing brought out about the, the tabernacle and, and those things and, and how Christ is better than, than uh, Moses, that he's better than Abraham, that he's better than the, the sacrifices, uh, and, and now even that he is even better than the high priest. Uh, uh, Melchizedek and, and also the high priest that under the line of Aaron and now uh, to, we're at that point in chapter 9 where we've already talked about the earthly tabernacle that was built uh, first in the wilderness uh, that had you know the, the outer court uh, the holy place which were the candlestick the uh, showbread and the incense altar was at and the priest went in daily and they was uh, uh, they was they went by by uh, arrangement they, uh, they was order to it they was uh, you you worked at the tabernacle for so many days and then another group would come in and they would minister every day at the, in the uh, sanctuary, the holy place, the first room that would go into is the tabernacle, um, but only the second room where the high priest could only go, and he could only go once, and there's where uh, the uh, mercy seat, the uh, uh, this uh, uh, golden censer and, and, and all was in there, um, the Ark of the Covenant. I couldn't think of the word. You know how that goes at times. Um, the Ark of the Covenant goes there. And and the priest went in once with the blood of an animal uh, that was sacrificed not only for his sins but for the people's sins. And the sins of, of the people was only rolled back. It did not take away the sins. It only rolled them back. And now we come to that point where... Um, we see that Jesus is our high priest, starting with verse 11, chapter 9 of Hebrews. But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come with the greater, more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation. So here we see that Jesus is coming into not the earthly tabernacle, because as it's been said before in here, that if he was, he would not even been a, a priest, let alone a high priest on earth, because he was not of the uh, Levites, and he wasn't a son of Aaron. Uh, but here we see him as a new priest, a, a eternal priest. His priesthood will never end. Uh, and he comes into not the sanctuary here on earth but the one that's in heaven, that the one on earth is only a shadow of, a picture of, a, a symbolic of the real uh, tabernacle that is in heaven that God is in. And Jesus, our high priest, he's talking about the better things because now we're being able to enter into the heavenly tabernacle, the heavenly uh, sanctuary where God himself is is, is at and that we have access to that because of the obedience of Christ because of the shedding of the blood uh, so we're talking about the better things here not of what's on this earth but what's in heaven uh, verse 12 uh, not with the blood of goats and calves but with his own blood he entered the most holy place once for all having obtained eternal redemption uh, Let's, yeah, let's go on. Uh, for if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of the heifer uh, 
sprinkled the unclean, sanctified for the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleansing our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgression under the first covenant, that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. So what he's saying, is going back to verse 12, what he's saying is he, not like the high priest here on earth that had to make a sacrifice for themselves and take the blood that was sacrificed for themselves and the blood that was sacrificed for the people into the holy of holies and sprinkle on the uh, mercy seat and the horns of the altar. Uh, he, he, Jesus, entered his own blood. He shed his own blood to obtain eternal redemption. You see, in the Old Testament covenant, when the high priest went in on the day of atonement and sprinkled the blood on the altar and, and on the uh, mercy seat, it only rolled the sins back. There was a, always a remembrance of sin. They were just rolled back. But now, when Jesus entered into the Holy of Holies in heaven with his own blood, because it needed to be a blood sacrifice uh, for the redemption of sin, now sin is abolished. The power of sin has been broken by what Christ has done for you and I and for the Old Testament covenant. That instead of this being rolled back one year until the next year and a remembrance of them, now we can forget them. We can, we can be forgiven, uh, forgotten about and continue on with our life in Christ and stay holy in Him because of what Christ has done. In verse 14, he talks about um, the blood of Christ through the eternal Spirit offered Himself without spot. In other words, the sacrifice in the Old Testament had to be without blemish. It had to be a perfect sacrifice. It, had, it couldn't have a, a, a limp. It couldn't have, you know, Anything wrong with it. It couldn't be sick. It had to be a perfect sacrifice for it to be acceptable. Well, with us, Jesus is that perfect sacrifice. He never sinned. He was tempted, but he never sinned. It's not wrong that we are tempted, but it is wrong when we act on that temptation. And Jesus has now given us the power to overcome any temptation that comes into our life because of his sacrifice, the shedding of his blood, and him entering into the Holy of Holies, which is in heaven, and he is our eternal high priest, making intercession for us to the Father right now for each of us. And that helps us. That, that, is, that is a better covenant than what the old covenant was. Uh, it cleans our conscience, our thinking. Um, conscience has this idea of knowing the right from wrong. Uh, knowing that when you do something, it's, it's either wrong or it's the right thing to do. Uh, and, and knowing that in your, in your um, spirit or your uh, mind, however you want to put it, uh, in your soul. Uh, he talks about cleansing our, our minds. In other words, uh, purifying us and giving us, we're washed with the word, which is... The representation here of, of being changed by applying the word to your life. Talks about dead works. Dead works are those things that we do that is not initiated by God. They are the things that we initiate. Dead works are the things that we initiate ourselves because that's what we want to do. And we don't have God in the mix of it at all. But those things as for example, me teaching this program. God initiated it. And I accepted that and followed through with it. Uh, that is good works. Where if I had done this on my own, for my own recognition, it would really be a dead work even though I'm teaching the Word. 
It has to be initiated by God to be a good work. Uh, anything else is dead because there's no life in it. The Spirit's not in it. It's not being led by the Spirit. Uh, it needs to have that life in it. And he said that we have been uh, cleansed of those dead works, those things that we were doing only to get recognition for ourselves or only to help us. Uh, now we're doing things, uh, the good works are doing things that, that glorify God. Uh, verse 15, and it, it says, For this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant. You see, now, if you, you know the law that we understand today of, of a uh, will, uh, is a, a testament. And that is, this is what this person's wishes are when they die. It has no power until the person that made this will or this testament dies. So Jesus now is that mediator of the new covenant. He is the one that will bring it into existence. Verse 16. For where there is a testament, there also um, necessary be the death of the tester. That's what I was talking about with the will. It's, it is uh, not enforced. It's not have any strength. It has no legal steady, standing until the one who makes the will, the tester, dies. So here we go. Verse 17, for the testament is enforced after the, the men are dead since it has no power at all while the tester is alive. In other words, if you have a will, it's not enforced. It's just a piece of paper until you die. And then it comes into power. It comes into activation. But until then, as long as you're alive, it's, it's just a piece of paper. Uh, so, uh, verse 18, Therefore, not even the first covenant was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of uh, calves and goats with water, uh, scarlet wool, and hyssop, and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant which God has commanded you. Uh, then likewise he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood. And without shedding of blood, there is no remission. And what he's talking about there, there's no remission of sin. Uh, there's no cleansing without the shedding of blood. Uh, what the, the writer of Hebrews is telling us that when Moses... Uh, dedicated the temple, or, uh, the tabernacle in the wilderness. Uh, he had to dedicate it with the shedding of blood. They had to be an animal sacrifice of, uh, here it tells us that it was the blood of, of calves and goats. There had to be a blood sacrifice that would uh, be used to sprinkle on not only the book of the laws that was read to the people, but also onto the people themselves to sanctify all to be under the covenant. And then we're talking about the old covenant that we are, that was put in place at that moment. Uh, <clears throat> and this was all according to the Old Testament law, the, the old covenant. But now, let's look at, the, at verse 23. <clears throat> Therefore, it was necessary that the copies of these things in the heavens should be purified with, with these, but the heavenly things themselves are better sacrifices than these, or with better sacrifice than these. In other words, <clears throat> the sacrifices in the Old Covenant weren't, they were acceptable, but they weren't the perfect Sacrifice. They weren't the ones that God really, truly wanted. <clears throat> so he goes on here, verse 24. For Christ has not entered the holy place made with hands, which are copies of the, of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. 
not that he should offer him not that he should offer himself often as the high priest entered the most holy place every year with blood of, of another. Now get this. Christ is not entering the holy place here that was on earth, but he is entering the holy of holies, which is in heaven, which God is there in the present. You see, uh, in the Old Testament, the Hebrews believed that God dwelled on the mercy seat in the holy of holies. <clears throat> well, here we see that God dwells in the holy of holies in heaven, and this is where Jesus had to present himself. This is where uh, uh, the true tabernacle is. The true holy of holies is. Uh, where the earthly one was only a shadow, a, a type, a, a copy of, of what appeared in heaven that God gave to Moses to have built. Now, in verse 25 he tells us, that he should offer himself often. He should not offer himself one time. Jesus only had to offer himself one time. Where in the Old Testament, every year on the atonement day, the high priest had to go into the Holy of Holies with the blood of a sacrificial uh, calf or, or, or goat or whatever that was needed at that time. Uh, and... And do it every year. Where now with Christ he has entered the Holy of Holies one time with his blood. And he has, doesn't have to do it again. It's all taken care of. It's done. Uh, now in verse 26 he then would have to, had to suffer often from the foundation of the Lord. What he's trying to get across to us is if it wasn't done this one time, because it was only one time, he doesn't have to go back and suffer and die on the cross every year from the foundation of the earth until now because he was that perfect sacrifice that, that satisfied what was needed for sin. And now we have that perfect satisfied. Uh, verse 27. And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this the judgment, so Christ offered once to bear the sins of many to those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear the second time, apart from sin, for salvation. Now, here we have this, this hint that it's appointed to man to die once. There's two people in the Old Testament that we have no record of them dying. Well, actually three. But Melchizedek was a type of Christ. Uh, the man that we're talking about is Elijah was taken up to heaven in a whirlwind. And Enoch, he was... And then he wasn't. There's very few verses about Enoch, but he, he, was, he didn't die. He walked with God and he was, was and then he was not. In other words, we don't know what happened to him. We, we believe that he was taken up into heaven. So those are two that I believe are the witnesses in the revelations that we may talk about in another program. But right now, uh, it is appointed to every man to die once. But after this, the judgment. In other words... We're to live this life um, with the idea that we're living it for Christ and accepting his sacrifice and, and living a life of Christ and living for him and, and doing the things that God has called us to do. Um, and then there'll be a judgment. Our judgment for Christians was at the cross when we accepted Christ. Now, our works from then on, they'll be judged, but we won't. Now, <clears throat> for those who do not accept Christ as their Savior, then they will be judged. Not only their works, but themselves. And again, we'll later we we'll get into that. But Christ offered himself once for sin, for all, for the Old Testament, for right now. 
and for all that's to come after us. He has died once to fulfill uh, what was needed. Uh, it's kind of kind of the idea here that that what was meant for the judgment that you and I should have be receiving is now in the hands of Christ. He has taken our place in that judgment and give himself, instead of us being judged, he's taken that judgment on himself. <coughs> and he says to those who eagerly wait, Old Testaments were looking for a Messiah to come. And that was their faith, that God was going to send a Messiah to them. Uh, and they was looking forward to that time. Here now, you and I today, we look back at the cross at a Savior that has already come and trust in Him. And that is to take us away from sin, to forgive our sins, but also to bring salvation to us. Now, in chapter 10, For the law have a shadow of the good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never, uh, with these same sacrifices which they offer continually year by year, make those who approach perfect. In other words, the law could not make you perfect. The sacrifices they were making did not make them perfect. It only rolled back the sins, kept rolling them back until Christ came and died on the cross. Uh, verse 2, For uh, then would they not have ceased to be offered, for the worshiper, once purified, would have had, had no more con uh, consciousness of sin. But in those sacrifices there is a reminder of sin every year, for it is impossible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sin. Here again is types. The shedding of the blood of, of bulls and calves and lambs and, and that um, only rode the sins back. It didn't take them away. We were still needing that perfect sacrifice, that one that would come, that God would prepare so that we would have the perfect sacrifice that not only rolled back the sins because we always had that consciousness of, of knowing what sin was from the law, but it was not able to take it away. It was not able to make men perfect. It was only a teacher that helped to help us recognize what sin was but it could not do away with or take away. Verse 5, Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offerings you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me, and burnt offerings and sacrifices for sins, and you had no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come. In the volumes of the book that is written of me, to do your will, O Lord. You see, Here's what he's talking about. Christ came and lived here on earth. It was a body that God had prepared ahead of time, you might say. And now he's making a decision. Sacrifices and offerings. That's not what I wanted. Burnt offerings and sacrifice for sins. I, that's not what I wanted either. But what I do want, at the end of verse 7, to do your will, O oh God. You see, that's the thing that God wants you and I to do. As Even as Christ is our example, was to do the will of God. The sacrifices were only pointing us to what Christ would do uh, for us. For the Jews in the Old Testament... It was looking forward to when Christ would come, the Messiah would come, and that he would uh, take over. Uh, you and I, it is more desirable for us to please God through faith by doing the will of God. And that is doing the things he's called you and I to. We are, are, are designed to bring pleasure to God by willfully 
doing what he's called us to do. Verse 8, preciously saying, sacrifices and burnt offerings uh, offered for sins you did not desire, nor had pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law. Went back to the Old Testament here. Uh, they were given according to the law. They, they had to follow the law. They had to do these things. They were physical doing that had to be done. Verse 9, then he said, behold, I come to do your will, O Lord. He takes away the first that he may establish the second. But that will, we will have sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. You see what he's saying? It, again, it's not the sacrifice and the offerings of, of animals that, that God desired. Because it was only pointing us towards the Messiah, towards Jesus Christ. It was only pointing us to the fact that there was sin in the world and that we need to have a Savior. And now, uh, verse 9, when he says, Behold, I come to do your will, O God. He's talking about Jesus Christ who came and did the will of God here on earth. And even unto the death of the cross that we look back to for our salvation, for the cleansings of our sins, and that it was his blood sacrifice, not of an animal, but of a human being that, that came, and his name was Jesus Christ, to offer his body once for all creation, from the very beginning of time till the end of time, that sacrifice won. Jesus Christ himself has been given and there's no more needs to be given. And it's now, will you and I accept that? Will we receive the forgiveness that God has provided for us that he himself has given to us? And will we now follow our Lord Jesus Christ and do the will of God and do it the way that God wants it done and listen for his spirit to guide us. I tell you, when you're starting to follow after the Lord and doing his will, and you see the pleasure, the, the joy that was talked about, and his joy is full. Right now, follow Christ, do his will in Jesus' name. God bless you. I'm Judy Redlick, Church Relations Manager for Johnny and Friends Greater St. Louis. We are so excited that WTJR TV airs the Johnny and Friends television show. Watch it, won't you? And if you'd like to know more about Johnny and Friends Greater St. Louis, your closest office, you can contact us at 314-773-5664 or write us at P.O. Box. 190884 St. Louis, Missouri 63119 This program raises questions. This program is for people who find it hard to trust God. The best answers are wrapped in flesh and blood. My friends, people who are enduring real tragedies every single day. Quadriplegia, muscular dystrophy, stroke, bankruptcy, loneliness, singleness. We're going to talk to those very people who have touched my life. Join us each week on Christian Music Countdown. My name is Brianna Adele, and every week we count down our top favorite worship music videos. We have great artists like Bethel Worship, Elevation Worship, and more. New guests, exciting stuff. Please join us. You don't want to miss out. Join your host, Brianna Riddell, for new music, new artists, great worship, and more. This program 